Xenophobia is rearing its ugly head in the United States again. New laws have been introduced to build a new wall along the U.S.-Mexico border, expand deportation, ban immigrants from Muslim-majority countries, and halt refugee admissions. Although my family has been in the United States for seven generations, these new immigration policies have a deep impact on me. They are painful reminders of how my Chinese immigrant grandparents were targeted for similar laws and discrimination. 135 years ago, on May 6, 1882, the Chinese Exclusion Act was passed on the grounds that Chinese immigration endangered the good order of the United States. It suspended the immigration of Chinese laborers and allowed only a small group of merchants, teachers, travelers, students, and diplomats to apply for admission. Chinese immigrants and Chinese Americans were subjected to extreme vetting, detention, and deportation. All Chinese immigrants were barred from becoming naturalized U.S. citizens. It was the first time that the U.S. had singled out a specific group for exclusion based on their race and national origin. Like so many other immigrants, my grandfather, Li Chiyut, had his sight set on America. The problem was that it was 1918, and by then, the Chinese exclusion laws had already been in place for many years. Thus, when he sailed into San Francisco, grandfather's ship was met by a number of uniformed U.S. immigration officials. Along with all of the other Chinese immigrants, he was rounded up and ferried to the immigration station on Angel Island. During his medical examination, he was stripped naked and physicians meticulously examined his teeth, skin, hair, sexual organs, and bones and noted their findings in his immigration file. He was then sent to the crowded detention barracks to await further investigation. His situation was tricky. His admission into the country depended on his ability to prove that he was exempt from the exclusion laws. A farmer all of his life, grandfather did not qualify as one of the exempt classes. So he purchased papers from another immigrant, a merchant named Yi Yuka, who agreed to claim him as his son. It cost a thousand dollars. Grandfather thus gave up his identity as Li Chi Yut and became Yi Xiu Ning. With his new identity came a new family history that he studied and memorized, including the names, ages, whereabouts, and other details of his paper family. The real test came when both father and son were called before immigration officials. Interviewed separately, they were asked detailed questions about their family and village life and their departure for America. How many rows are in your home village? asked Inspector A.S. Hemstreet on July 10, 1918. Who lives in the third house from the head of the village? Give the names of husband, wife, and children who all live there. In total, the inspector asked Grandfather 145 questions. Fortunately, his answers agreed with those of his paper father, and Grandfather was released from Angel Island after two weeks. The Chinese exclusion laws were repealed in 1943, and my grandparents became citizens soon thereafter. But my grandfather's experience on Angel Island and the experiences of the hundreds of thousands of other Asian immigrants who were targeted for exclusion and discrimination have left deep scars that many of us are still feeling generations later. We know what happens when xenophobia dictates our immigration policy and targets certain groups for discrimination, which is why we must stand up and speak out to make sure that these historic mistakes are not repeated today.